Hey guys, back again. So I rewatched Graduation Day because I bought the uh, Vinegar Syndrome uh, release, and this is my first Vinegar Syndrome Blu-ray as well. But I bought that, and I thought I've had reviewed this before, and I think I have like a long time ago, maybe like two or three years ago. Um, and I only saw it the one time before the second viewing, so I thought I might as well review it again because I really didn't remember much about Graduation Day. I remember whenever I rated it on Letterboxd years ago, I gave it like a two out of five stars. I really thought it wasn't that interesting at all, personally, or that fun of a slasher. Uh, but rewatching it, I did, I am glad I bought it and I'm glad I rewatched it because I did like it a tad more this time. Um, I like how the movie, it's just exploitive like all these other slashers, but um, I don't really see that many that are about like graduation like th in this kind of way i know there's another horror movie slasher called fatal games which i have not seen um and i want to see now because they whenever i linked this up on wikipedia for this movie they said another similar slasher was released in 1984 called fatal games so that sounds good because i love slashers i'll watch any of them there's some that i like more than others um, but i love the genre i can watch any of them regardless of at least watch them once and this one i like how it is a slasher at school and I know there's a lot of those, but this one, I did enjoy that fact. I did enjoy, I thought the editing in this was actually weird, but it was good. Um, it's not something to really mention first off in a slasher, but I did appreciate the fact that the movie, it wasn't just like, we're going to film it and then that's it. It's going to be long cuts or long shots of stuff. It's going to be, no, we're going to have interspliced cuts throughout the whole movie and whether it's when a character is about to die or is the next character that's going to be picked off, it'll have a person doing something like the person doing gymnastics on that thing up, that swinging thing. And why she does it, it'll show shots of something going on, like somebody getting killed um, while she's doing that. But it's cut, it's in like cut, like in a couple separate increments, like throughout while the character is doing this. So I thought that was cool with the editing and the fact that I don't see that much in these really low budget slashers. I didn't notice that first watch or think about that really first watch but i noticed that the editing in this was interesting because it kept doing a lot of split cuts while showing the rest of the movie and i thought that was interesting um especially the opening the opening where the girl's in the track field and like she dies but right before it it's showing all the people running but it's showing people in the gymnastics uh, place as well doing all this at the same time i thought that was pretty fascinating just with the editing choices they made and it honestly it doesn't make the movie very better than other slashers because I th still think this one's okay, but I like that they did put a lot of work into the editing and, and it's not one of those low budget slashers that's just here's long shots. We're going to cut, then we're going to do something else, then we're going to do another long shot. It's not, it's not just that. And I appreciate about that about this movie. Um, they're very quick cuts, but they're good and weird. Um, but I, I did like that. I did like that on this watch. Um, there's a good amount of kills in this, um, and I'm going to name them off. I remember I, I remember the football kill. Um, like, that one was an obvious one to remember, because it's the guy where he's like, hey, hand me back my football. And the killer puts a sword in the football, throws it, and it spikes, so it spikes into the guy, and he's like, oh, like that. Like, that was a funny one. And that's the only one I remembered until this rewatch. But there is one girl that gets her neck killed in the woods where the blood like splatters on camera, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, I like that they, uh, I like that with these kills, they, they have a killer who has a timer. And, and that's something that I didn't see in any other slasher where I like this killer kills somebody in under 30 seconds. So I just thought that was a cool little gimmick in this slasher genre. I don't see that much in any other slasher. So I, I like that that's a different thing in this one because slashers are a dime a dozen and especially in the eighties. And I love watching them. Uh, and I like noticing little differences throughout each one. And that's one of the little differences I don't remember seeing in any other slashers. Um, I like too, that you got Linnea Quigley in this. I thought that was hilarious. Um, her name is Dolores in this movie, but of course she is trying to get with a teacher that's just always something Quentin Lene quickly does. She's always a sex crazed character or she always shows her boobs, which is, which is her type, which is, which is pretty fun. But, uh, she, I don't know if this is her first movie that she was in. This was 1981. 
Um, to be honest, I don't know. I know most movies after this, like Creepazoids or Night of the Demons and all that. But I don't know when she started doing film. Um, oh, and you also can't forget Sorority Babes and Slime Ball Arama. Just with that title alone, you can't remember that. You can't forget that movie. Uh, but yeah, Lenny Quigley's in this as well. Um, I like how the killer has a fencing outfit. And that's, again, something I don't see much in slashers, but I know that they did that in Urban Legends Final Cut, which I enjoyed, uh, from what I remember. It did the same kind of fencing thing, except for the fencing outfit, and that was black, and this is a pure white fencing outfit with, like, you can easily see the face underneath who the killer is, um, especially on Blu-ray, which is which is just like with Sleepaway Camp, or with Sleepaway Camp, you can tell, especially with the shot where, like, the door opens up, and it's Ricky that's with Angela's hair, but like it's in HD so you can tell it's just like that in this where like you can see the fencing face the face in the fencing outfit like right there um and that's weird with that kind of quality for video because those movies kind of were so darkly lit and darkly fuzzy like in like in the 80s on VHS or in theaters so like seeing those now upgraded it's kind of weird to see those kind of differences because it doesn't ruin the movie but it's like oh I can tell who it is right there um I like it. I, I mentioned some of the kills. I also like the guy getting fall, fell into the spikes. I thought that was cool. He didn't see an impact though, but I thought that was fun. Um, the music scene with the head getting chopped off was fun. Um, I like the I like the ending. All right, like the the killer, Kevin. I had to write his name down on this paper because I was like, Kevin, is that who it is? Because honestly, I still think the killer is pretty forgettable. Um, the like and this is spoilers for this um i usually don't say spoiler spoil three of my titles but i'll say it in the video so spoilers start now or i mean it already did i already said the killer's name my bad but more spoilers but the killer is kevin um who is very forgettable it's a guy who is going to marry the girl who died at the beginning of the movie who died from overexertion running on the track and he's like we were gonna get married and we're and i loved her and blah blah, blah. and it's just it the the performance was kind of hammy fun but it was just like the character just kind of felt really forgettable to me um and some of the other characters feel that way too um i do like seeing lenny quickly in this i do like the main girl who lives through the movie um Anne, who has a name her actress has a name called patch which i thought was a funny name for a girl patch um in real life but i i didn't mind Anne, the main character either the main girl um, she and Kevin duke it out at the end. That's their, they're the ending fight together. Um, and I like how they go back to the track field where it all started. So I like how it felt full circle at the end whenever Ann fought him and they ran into the spikes and then he was killed. Um, I like, I really like the final jump scare. And, and it's funny because some jump scares and slashers at the end, I'm just like, oh, that's so cheap. And this one I thought was good in a, in a, in a, uh, in a way that messes with the character psychosis where like Kevin's dead, but the dad walks into her, into Anne's room and he's holding a bottle, but then like, it looks like it's Kevin with a knife, but then the lights turn on and it's an immediate fade to the dad just with a glass like this. And it was a cool editing choice. And it was just a cool final jump scare. Like I thought it was a cool that it kind of just stuck with the Anne character. Um, I thought that worked. And, and like I said, the movie overall to me, it's, it's moderately fun like it's got some fun moments um it's also got some interesting moments with like the music choices because you got a whole scene where a band plays a whole song while people are getting killed in the background like it cuts back and forth but i thought that was a cool music choice as well um but yeah overall the movie i thought it had some fun characters the kills were fun but it's really just low on the spectrum of slashers for me. Like, it's not anything super special. Um, I liked it overall, um, but I thought it was just okay at best in terms of entertainment. I don't really rate these slashers in terms of quality for filmmaking because they're not trying to be that. They're exploitation. But this one, I thought, did an okay job. Like I said, I like some main characters and I like some of the kills. I like some of the choices. I like the killer's get up and using the, the watch. Like, I thought that was cool. So... Yeah, overall, nothing nothing really super special, but I enjoyed Graduation Day for what it was on rewatch. And again, I'm glad Vinegar Syndrome got made that release because I haven't had owned any of those releases yet from Vinegar Syndrome, and I want to get more. Um, but I thought that was a good first first one to get. So 
that's it for today. Um, I've got more reviews coming up, so if anybody wants to stay and watch, I've got more coming, so uh, subscribe if you can. And I'll thank you guys for watching. Take care.